We're nearing the end. There's one more advanced concept, though not difficult to implement, but one advanced concept I want to cover. Let's go back to our application and to really show what I mean, let me set off to true so that we can go to new post again. So now you see new post can be loaded. And let's go to the network tab in the developer tools. There, if we have a look at all the requests, once we load the page, so by going to posts, you see that we're loading this bundle.js file. This contains all our source code and here is relatively big because we're in development mode. It will be much smaller once you're shipping this for production. It's optimized by our build workflow automatically then. I will talk about this later when we deploy the app. Still, loading the entire bundle with all the code of our application up front can be bad if we have a big application with distinct features and distinct areas in the app where a user might never visit a certain area. Like in our app, we have the posts. If the user never visits new posts, loading the code responsible for that component doesn't make a lot of sense. If we have a look at our routes, I'm talking about the new post component here. This should only be loaded if the user actually navigates to slash new post. Otherwise new post and all potential children are never needed. So why should we download the code upfront? Would be better to not download it and hence have a smaller upfront chunk to download and instead download the code responsible for this component and its children when needed. Now for a tiny application as ours here, this is not super useful because making that extra request for one kilobyte or something, what this component is worth when it comes to its size, that's not super useful. But it is useful to know this technique for real, for bigger applications you're building where this might matter, where you are downloading quite a bit. The technique of downloading only what you need is known as code splitting or lazy loading. And there you essentially want to make sure that in your component, you're only loading the component once you need it. How does this work? To implement code splitting or lazy loading with create react app and react router 4. And that's important. This technique will work for react router 4 and for create react app because code splitting depends heavily on the webpack configuration you're using. It is an advanced concept after all. So the way I'm showing you is the way it works with the config from create react app, which is a pretty modern and good configuration though. So chances are it also works in any other decently set up webpack project, or as I said at the beginning of this course, I strongly recommend using create react app anyways. So for this to work in this setup, we need a higher order component. So let's create a new folder, HOC, and in there I'll add a new component, which I'll name async component, async component.js. That's the JavaScript file name because this component or this code here should help me load a component asynchronously, i.e. only when it's needed. Now here in this async component file, I will create a new constant, a new function in the end, which I'll name async component. There I expect to get my import component argument, which will in the end be a function. And I'll come back to how to use this async component function and what to pass here exactly over the next seconds. So there I now need to return something and I will return a class here, which extends component. So a normal react component. Therefore, I need to import React because we'll also use some JSX and component from React. Now in the body of that class here, I now of course also need a render method. But before we come to this, I'll set up state. And there I want to have a state which with a component property which is null. This state here, this component property will be set to the dynamically loaded component and the code for this will get implemented in component did mount. So once this component was 
mounted here, this wrapping higher order component. Now, as I said, import component should be a function reference in the end. So what I want to do is I want to execute import component here. And this actually will be a function which will return us a promise. I know this because I know how I'm, how I'm going to use this async component. In the function of this then block, we'll get an argument, CMP maybe, the name is up to you, which will have one property, default, which will be the component we loaded dynamically. So in this then block, I can call this set state and set my component state to CMP default. This is the case due to the setup we're using here with create react app. It is all of course heavily reliant on the type of function import component will refer to and which I'll show you in the next minutes as I said, no worries. So now at some point of time, we will have loaded the actual component we want to use and it will be stored in our state. Hence in the render method, we want to render it. I'll create a constant and name it C and this should be this state component. Then I want to return JSX in this render method and I'll check if C is set in a ternary expression. If it is set, then I'll render C as a normal React component. I'll use this, this props spread trick here to pass any props we might need to this component and I'll set it to null if C is not set yet, so if the component hasn't been resolved yet. Of course, I now also need to export this async component function here. Now we can save this file and now we can go back to the block component where we do import new post. I want to load this dynamically now. Now the thing is, whenever you're importing something like this here, with import something from somewhere, you basically inform Webpack, the build tool which gets used behind the scenes, about this dependency and it will include it in the global bundle. This is its job. Now for lazy loading, this is exactly the opposite of what we wanna do. We don't want to include it in the bundle, we want to load it when needed. Still, Webpack needs to be able to dynamically prepare some extra bundle for this potentially loaded code. So what we have to do is we have to comment out this old way of importing and instead I'll create a new constant which I'll name async new post. The name of course is up to you. This will now use this new async component function we created in the HOC folder. So I'll import async component from and now I'll move up to the HOC folder and import it from that async component file. And I'll then use async component here and execute it. Now async component, this function requires an argument. And I told you that this argument in that function, we named it import component, that this argument should be a function, which is why we executed like one here in component did mount. So we have to pass some function to async component. And this should be an anonymous function. I'm using a ES6 arrow function here. The interesting part is what we return in this function. And keep in mind, if you write it in one line, whatever comes right of the error is immediately returned. If you use curly braces, you need to return something with the return keyword. So I'm going to take the longer approach. There I'll use the import keyword as a function. This is a special syntax, the dynamic import syntax, which means whatever comes between the parentheses here is only imported when that function here is executed. And that function here will only be executed once we render async new post to the screen. So here I then take my original path to new post and now I'm only importing this when this constant gets used somewhere. Now, of course, I want to use it somewhere. I want to use it down at the bottom of my block container at the new post route. 
Instead of using new post as a component, I want to use async new post as a component. Eventually this will be a component because keep in mind, async component returns a component. We have a higher order component. It returns a class with a render method. So this is a valid component. This component will eventually render some dynamically loaded component and we decide which component this should be with the function we pass to async component. Now if we save this and we go back to our application, watch that part on the bottom right when I click on new post. Once I click there, you see that this one chunk JS file was loaded, which is very small. This is an extra bundle webpack created because whilst bundling our code, it detected this dynamic syntax here, which it knows due to our setup we're using to this build workflow setup. And therefore it created an extra bundle with the new post component and all potential child components that were exclusive to that component, if any. But it didn't add it to the main bundle. Instead, it's prepared to load it when needed, when we actually include async new post, which we only do when navigating to slash new post. This is how you load components asynchronously. And as I mentioned, this is extremely useful in bigger apps where there are bigger chunks of code, a whole feature area in your application, for example, which might not even be visited by the user. So you can save that code upfront to only load it when needed.